Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about big code bases and programming languages. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what language, languages are big projects or big code base friendly? Is it just C sharp? Well, the short answer is no, but in general, the big code base friendly languages are number one, the strictly typed languages and number two, the simplest languages. Let me explain. So the statement that C sharp is one of those languages is very true. I would argue that C sharp is a very, very good choice for a large system or a large code base because it has a strict typing system and it is a fairly simple language. And we're going to have to define a little bit what simple means because I might have a different definition from what you have. Uh, one example would be that some people will, I, I think that it's important to mention the simplicity of it all because I have had this comparison a few times before in an old video actually where I explained the problems of Scala as an example. Like there's a lot of power in Scala but one of the problems that Scala actually has is that it's not simple. And if you have a look at something like say Go or Golang, it's a very simple language. It has the strict typing system but it lacks a little bit of maturity at this point if you compare it to something like Java and C Sharp and so forth. But if we're going to just make a very short list, usually the most popular languages, languages for large scale systems is going to be Java and it's going to be C Sharp for most part if we're talking about web oriented stuff. And in if we're going to go a little bit looser than that, you might find that, as I said, Scala can be a very good choice, but uh, we're going to touch on why there's a few considerations to make there as well. Golang would also be a very good choice, but there are a few caveats or like whatever we call them, like a few things to take a, to, to be aware of there as well. But just in general, guys, a strictly type, a strict typing system, I mean, even TypeScript, is a very good choice for a large code base if you're going to do anything in say JavaScript or something like that or in Node for example. These like, just in general take that with you that the strict typing system is a very good thing. The reason is very simple because in a large code base when you're trying to scale a really large system it is very 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 hard to make changes with confidence if you don't have a compiler. Because a compiler will help you with an entire category of different sorts of problems such as knowing what a model should look like, knowing what properties are named what, knowing how to move one symbol or one set of code to one place and then make sure that all the references to that code is actually found. If you're using something that is loosely typed, such as, uh, well, you can, of course, actually type certain areas of, say, PHP or just vanilla JavaScript or Python or Ruby or something like that, right? It might be a little bit tricky to actually figure that out. It's not like a deal breaker, but it just creates a, it, it's an entire, an entire category of problems that you have to deal with. There are trade-offs with loosely typed languages versus strict type, strictly typed languages. So I'm not going to say that one is better than the other. It's just that in general, the consensus is that strictly typed languages are a very good thing for large scale development. So that's one part of it. The other part is simplicity. Now simplicity, does, simplicity doesn't mean that you know the syntax necessarily is easy. What simplicity means is that there is a very low, ideally, or as low as possible at least, threshold or curve, learning curve, for adopting a language or for getting people to a language and for making them feel productive and make them feel like, yeah, I kind of know this, I kind of get how this works. This is very, very important because just because you have a strictly typed language, that doesn't save you from creating your own complexity. That's the thing that usually that Scala has as an example a problem with. Now Scala is extremely powerful. There are so many things you can do with that language. It is powerful. Like I would, I can't really, in terms of features, think of another language that has more features and more flexibility than than Scala when it comes to just computational freedom and working with different paradigms such as functional programming, object-oriented programming, etc, etc, right? But 
there is a sweet spot. This is the thing that I will argue to you. And that is that sweet spot between empowerment and simplicity. If you go the, to the other extreme, you might look at something like Golang and see, okay, the feature set on Go is actually very, sm very small. Now that's not a bad thing. Having less features is actually not bad. It comes down to having just enough. The perfect language, if there is such a thing, is a language that has exactly the amount of features that you need in order to produce the results that you want. Because any like permutations or any extra patterns or anything like, let's say that for the sake, and a favorite of mine is, let's take JavaScript and let's talk about promise chaining versus async await. Now these two things are the same thing. They do the exact same thing. It's just that you have two ways of doing the same, the same thing. So now all of a sudden, you're in a situation where, okay, now you have to have an opinion. When do you use async await and when do you use promise chaining? Which one are you gonna use? Why not just have one as an example? Like that's the, that's the simplicity that Go tries to force on and for kind of push that there's one way to format things and then there's one way to do things as much as humanly possible. Python is a very similar sort of thing where they try to enforce a standard of working because there's a lot of power in having a very familiar pattern that everybody kind of just learns once and can get on board with. The downside may be that, okay, you might not have as much flexibility, but that's what I'm saying. You have to find that, ideally you want to find that sweet spot. So if Scala is on the extreme flexibility side, that creates one set of problems because that means that there's so much to learn and so many ways you can do the same thing that you need to invent a bunch of rules and coding standards and stuff like that. Or you might have to educate people even more than you would have to educate them in another language just to get them productive with something like Scala. In Go, you might face another sort of challenge where, okay, I need to do certain things, but the language isn't really all that diverse. It hasn't really grown into this behemoth type of, such as say Java, which is like a, I don't know how many libraries there are for Java, it's insane. And, and quite a lot of them are actually in the standards as well but something like Go may not have all of that. So you may find that, oh shit, there's just a bunch of public libraries that kind of do what I want, but they're not really well supported or stuff like that. So you might find that you're just not able to do certain things or there's no convenient way of doing it. So that's the thing, right? It's a trade-off. So what I want you to take away from this is that when it comes to asking the when we're asking the question what is a good language for a large scale application type of thing the the questions you should basically look for is is it strictly type in other words strictly type is it uh, is it easy to scale this to a point where i can make changes to the code base without being afraid of breaking the code just as a, an example would be to have a compiler and have a fairly good ecosystem around testing and things of this nature now c sharp is a very good language it's one of one of the best languages the same thing goes for java it's also a very good language but the other part of it is the simplicity how easy is it to find and learning resources. Well, for Java and for C Sharp, there's, it's quite not easy. It's very easy to find really good learning so resources and a lot of material, learning materials. Go might be trickier to find good learning materials in. It might not. It depends on your opinion, right? But that's one part of it. That, that part is very important. Like how easy is it to find people who know the language? How is it to train them? All of this stuff. And how much flexibility does the language have? Because if you have a language that is extremely flexible and very empowering, then usually you need more time to train people or to, to be fairly good with that thing versus if you have a very small language. But if you go too small, you might have problems finding stable packages and other libraries or features may be missing in that language that you actually depend on. So it becomes a, a very subjective decision that you have to make. You have to find that sweet spot that works well for you. Have a great day.